WJHS 91.5, The Eagle. Today is Mondays with the Mayor. I am Jonathan Peters. In the studio today, we have... Mr. Jordan Glazo. And the one, the only, the important one, why we're here... Good afternoon, Mayor Daniels here. Mr. Daniel, good to have you in the studio today. I missed the last time we did um, Mondays with the Mayor, and I'm sorry for that. We had baseball. I'm sure Mr. Glazo told you about it. it was well, yeah, we, we were missing a little je ne sais quoi because we weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. Mayor, t- this week is a great week, not because of the weather, not because of baseball, not because of softball. You had your State of the City um, speech. Yeah, State of the City dress uh, 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 I guess two weeks ago now, almost. Uh, so we, uh, yeah, it was a great opportunity for individuals to kind of hear about what, what's been accomplished over the last year, as well as what we're planning to do this current year in 2022. And, and, and we had a great turnout thanks to the Whitley County Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center for hosting that uh, event. And also thanks to Autumn Trace, um, a senior living community who also hosted it at their, in their cafeteria area and was, uh, did all the you know snacks and all that kind of stuff. So it was great. But yeah, we got to talk about a lot of really interesting uh, and kind of cool things. Obviously, what we did last year, and and you know of you, you know of many of those things because we've talked about them here on this show. Mm-hmm. But uh, a couple of things that are coming up this year that I thought you, you guys may be interested in, or at the very least, maybe some surprise things I talked about at the State of the City. A little sneak peek. Uh, yes, uh, is that uh, obviously we had the fiber fiber project going on, but um, we did get notification that we were awarded uh 1.8 million dollars for the trail extension yeah, over here there we go that. you know so that's so that's one thing uh we are going to do some downtown planning this year for um, a a strategic investment plan as well as a streetscape plan for downtown columbia city and uh, kind of a unique and interesting thing we're doing we're going to start this year is the columbia city arts commission uh so uh, many other cities have an arts commission where they uh, really, the goal is to expand the presence of the arts in our community. So whether that is visual arts or obviously auditory arts, you know, the performing arts, etc., uh, it really gives an opportunity to expand those in Columbia City. We already have seen those when it comes to the uh, the, the murals out there. Certainly, Whitney Whitley Arts those. Partnership, yeah, the Whitley Arts Partnership is doing more stuff with the. The musicals and the plays and things like that certainly fantacular. You know, was this past weekend uh, uh, here at Columbia City High School. So lots of really cool things happening with arts, but it's a good opportunity for the Columbia City Arts uh, Commission to really keep bringing that to the front to boost the arts and uh, and really find some great opportunities to provide some more aesthetic uh, experiences for our residents. I think there's so much we could dive into there, both for the future sure. and in the current yeah what one do we want to talk about first (laughs) okay do we want to deal with current first and then talk future as we go i love that the arts is on the way yeah from a practical standpoint let's let's begin chronologically i guess what was what was or which one do you want to talk (laughs) about let's start let's start with the trail yeah because that that probably uh that probably is something that, that a lot of individuals are interested in specifically at this moment uh, as we draw toward the end of, of the school year here, uh, it is something that is obviously a pressing issue, continues to be a pressing issue with students and others uh, having to walk down Main Street uh, slash State Road 9 uh, to get here to the Columbia City High School campus. So uh, we have applied multiple times and finally were awarded this time a DNR Next Level Trails grant for $1.8 million uh, to... Uh, to build an extension of trail, if you will, from uh, basically Main Street where B and J Rental is, that kind of on the yeah. other side of the river there, where where kind of the trail stops, to extend it over to Vine Street where we already have some section of trail, and then to continue down uh, Line Street uh, to where it'll cross over Radio Road, cross over the river, and then finally get to the high school, uh, Indian Springs, and. Little Turtle that, Campus. That is called Radio Road, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so it's yes. near that gas station, um, the Dairy... Uh, uh, dairy Barn. Yes, yes, yes. And in near that gas station right to there. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm kind of laying this out in my head. On, on Line Street. On yes. Line Street. On Line Street, yes. It'll come across the railroad tracks. Actually, it'll turn right past the the uh, county's uh, street department, the, the county highway department there. It'll go down kind of into the grassy area there toward the river 
turn back up, go across Radio Road, over the river finally, and then down sort of parallel with Main Street slash State Road 109 to get to the high school campus. Which so, works perfectly. Yeah. I, it's Well, it's going to be a great addition. Obviously, we have seen so many people that are utilizing uh, the berms <laughs> right. in other places. And we would have loved to get this built, you know, two or three years ago. But uh, obviously, we've not had the dollars for it. So this grant really gives that opportunity uh, uh, to do that. And we've had a lot of great participation along the way to, to make that happen. So safer for the citizens. Yeah. Also, beautification. Yep. I think that's wonderful. Is the, the path going to be the wide asphalt path? Has yes. that been decided yet? So yes. it's going to be a... A, what I like to call a bike cruising lane yeah. <laughs> where you can easily have foot traffic as, sure. as opposed to a usual yes. city sidewalk. Yes. I don't remember if it's eight cement. foot, uh, eight foot or 10 foot wide trails, but it will be wide enough that yes, you'll definitely be able to, to have two people or bicycle and, and individual or whatever passing each other along that way. So I should buy rollerblades now. There you go. Buy it saying. now. Yeah, because they'll be flying off the shelves once why, we get this tra trail done. We genuinely <laughs> used to do that all the time. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'll tell you, here's the real cool thing about this is once this part of the project is done, you will literally be able to take our trail system from the Columbia City High School campus clear up to Kroger. Wow, that is that is amazing. That's, I mean, literally, you know, the south side, a good portion of the south yeah. side will be covered. You know, the majority of, let's say, the east side is 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 pretty well covered there. And then now we're on the north side, right? So right. ultimately, next plans, if you will, will be to extend it to the west, out to the Westgate area and things to that effect, and then potentially up to, uh, um, I just lost Deer Chase, and try to get that connector up there too. So ultimately... In the master scheme of trails, we would love to have a circle around Columbia City that you can get on the trail basically on any side and just roll of the it. city. Absolutely. Yeah. It, that's a, by the way, good, good pun rolling. With just the, right. so that's see, a dad joke. See right what I did there. there? Yeah, I see you. Yeah. I definitely feel foot traffic um, for cities and small towns is very important because, you know, pollution is a big thing, but ultimately it really, I feel like it bonds the community more when they're walking everywhere. Sure. They could do explore nature and everything. People put up bird feeders in the summer. Um, and it's also a safety aspect because I know, like, to get to Kroger, if you're on foot, you have to cross Route 30, and that can yeah. be dangerous, especially with the timing of the lights and if you have a family and stuff like that, um, which I, I think it's, it's super important to have a trail that goes through. Is it – what's the park? Um, Morsh's Park. Morsh's uh -huh. Park, thank yep. you. Then it cuts right across yep. uh, on the other side of the river right to Kroger. And I think – I think that's really important for safety. Yeah, and I think the one thing that's really, really neat about this is if you actually look at the path of the trail, um, we actually cross the river multiple times. And so that, you know, going back to the original, and again, I'm going to get a little history here. Well, not super history detailed, but the history of how cities and towns came to be was really their confluence around rivers, right? Yeah. And so the cool part about this trail is, is – Really, we follow the river all the way through the city. Like we we will we will literally cross the river here at one of the what are the furthest south points, and we cross it again at one of the furthest north points in Columbia City once this trail is completed. So I mean, you call that destiny, you can call it whatever you want, but at the end of the day, it is a utilization of our river. It's a utilization of one of our assets in the community. And it kind of keeps it beautiful at the same time, Absolutely. which I really appreciate. The fact that it's the Y path, it's not just the the typical, sure. you know, cement path. But four foot, four foot sidewalks or whatever. Four foot yeah, sidewalks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes it makes it hard to pass, especially sure. if you enjoy riding a bike or whatever. It's always always one of those things that kind of like, whoa, you know, are we gonna, are we gonna, you know, are we, am <laughs> I gonna have a new friend pause. at the end of this? Yeah, I was gonna say it's yeah. the awkward pause of okay, are you going or am I going? Are we gonna? Yes. What are we gonna do? So very good, very yeah. good. Yeah. Well, we, I, yeah, I was going to say, I, the other thing I guess we could talk about, um, we could talk about maybe maybe that's a spot to, to talk about US-30 for one moment. Yeah, other yes, updates yes. in going um, around the, you know, around the, commu around yes. the community. <laughs> yeah, that no, wasn't a dad joke. No, that's a no, real no, thing. No, I, I, you know, obviously we have been advocating from the beginning to use the current route, and we think that's important for a lot of different ways. When you talk to individuals in Fort Wayne, especially city planners in Fort Wayne, many of them will lament the fact that when there was a planning of I-69 around or through the community, they didn't end up going through. They went around. Mm. And, and and there's 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 
many different instances of that across the state where they didn't capitalize on that opportunity. Some people see highways as obviously being a nuisance or being something that is is dirty or, or not not welcoming or whatever. But at the end of the day, that highway brings 30,000 people, 30,000 sure. vehicles per day through our city. 30,000 vehicles, about the same amount of vehicles as what we actually have population-wise here in Whitley County, okay? okay. So to, just to give you a perspective. So I, I say that to say we have been focused on keeping the highway um, in, on its current route with the goal of upgrading it to be a freeway. And if anybody in listener land has talked to me uh, or, or heard me speak, I usually always talk about US-30 because it is an economic engine. It is uh, an economic lifeblood for us, but it also has some serious safety and logistical concerns that we have to deal with. People going 80 miles an hour. Yes. and A block and a half and from that Kroger that we mentioned. That's right. And consistently having accidents and consistently having blown red lights and consistently having those kind of issues. So we have been advocating for the India or to the India Department of uh, Transportation for a, a Many, many years, let's say the vast majority of my tenure as mayor now, which is on year 11, if you'll believe that, and we have been <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Um, have been advocating, <laughs> though, on behalf of the future of U.S. 30. And so, um, as I mentioned to you guys before the show, a couple of a uh, couple of weeks ago, I went to down to the state house right. yes, to 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 speak to the governor's staff. And really, it had to do with. Uh, when we look at U.S. 30 specifically, one of those major industries is steel dynamics. You know, one of what one of the probably top two, three uh, companies in northern Indiana, hugely, obviously, employs tons of people, pays great wages, etc. Uh, but they have literally 13, 14, 1500 trucks per day coming in and out of that facility. So it's important as we plan for the future that we accommodate that kind of truck traffic. They're like one, they're, they're, they're amassing a percentage of yes. the traffic on Absolutely. 30. Yes. So you, you said earlier in the terms, you yeah. said highway to freeway. Yes. And the distinction there is interchange lanes, interchange. the rules, mm -hmm. the speed, yep. um, how the, the, the laws that govern kind of behind the scenes, how the road can be built. Right. So instead of coming up to intersections and lights, yes. which vehicles, not just trucks, but yeah. all vehicles, especially late at night, yep. especially terrible weather, stopping a vehicle is yes. an opportunity for when, hey, you stop a vehicle, terrible weather, yeah. they go through a light, they yeah. don't see the light, yep. there's other cars going the other way, also at at speed. Absolutely. So going from highway to freeway, yeah. it forces an interchange. Right. I can see that completely changing the landscape in and around Columbia City a little bit, especially the the curves that go up and around uh, on the the northeast side and things sure. like that. But Absolutely. ultimately, it's a safer, faster. It's more convenient for yeah. the road drivers as well, right. not just the protection of our communities. Uh, we we don't want accidents. But sure. what what's the latest and greatest about yeah. this thing, Mister Mayor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, let me. Add I love one the more idea. Thing before I, love the I answer idea. your question, one more thing I want to add to that is that uh, by INDOT's own studies, mm. uh, they show that by putting in a, 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 a freeway model on US-30, it will take our traffic on US-30 from 30,000 vehicles a day to 80,000 vehicles a day in 20 years, okay? So to give you some perspective, okay. yeah. So, so again, when I say this is an economic lifeblood, Certainly, there will be economic benefits of this road, but the safety benefits are really what I care about, right? Like, that's that's really one of my major factors as mayor. But to answer your question of where we're at and where we're going with that, so the India Department of Transportation uh, has agreed and are moving on a Planning and Environmental Linkage Study, a PEL, Planning and Environmental Linkage Study. And what they'll do is they basically are doing a study of the whole corridor from uh, from. I think the Ohio state line all Jeez. the way over to Valparaiso. You got some swing in, well, in down the, well, you made have, that happen. No, 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 no. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. Okay. No, go we on, do go have on. a U.S. 30 coalition. But, so uh, but I will say I'm, I'm merely the uh, secretary treasurer. Uh, Mayor Tomer <laughs> uh, over in Warsaw is, is the president, but here's, here's what I will say about this is that, is that we already know in dots moving in the freeway 
space. And here's why we know that. We know that they are working with uh, the intersection where Amazon is being located currently, which is Flaw Road. They are going to be turning that into an interchange. They're also working on Kramer, and I think it's O'Day Road on the other side, to improve those up to freeway type standards. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so we know the route, excuse the pun, the route they're taking. We know that they are I didn't looking see a pun to make at all. upgrades. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> route and route. Uh, anyways, so but but we know that that that's what they're planning to do, and so we are we're going to be actively working with them. I say all that to say, in the PEL study, there will be opportunities for our residents to give input, and when I when I find those out, I will certainly let residents know so that they can hear they can get the input. Now, mm, gosh, five years ago, I think now we actually did a we created a concept document where we worked with businesses and residents and others along the corridor. You can find that concept yeah. document at ColumbiaCity.net. Shameless plug. Uh, you can find that concept document there. And they have that concept document, and they'll be working through that. And certainly when the PEL happens, we'll be providing that. So okay, so maybe so, we've maybe we've beat this dead horse here. But uh, started at but. the whole Well, it's going <laughs> to it's going to affect us all. I imagine that there's probably going to be some acquisition of land moving of of oh, absolutely. Uh, interchanges. Yeah, there's going to be construction on the way. This is just kind of setting the expectation, probably with them looking from the Ohio state line through Indiana yeah. interchanges going in on both sides of Columbia City. Mm -hmm. Uh, foot traffic industry only increasing. Yes. It's nice to hear you say the one thing that I, I really took away from that. You're like, it'll take us from 30,000 to 80,000 cars. And you said, basically, the next 20 years are going to be gold. Yeah. Probably some bumps along the way. Sure. But we're, we're, planning, we're planning for like, hey, you know how when you're going to grandma's in 2035, we got you covered. You know, kind of <laughs> rather than just sure. like. We're we're sure. just filling that pothole for today. Yeah, it'll it'll the the it'll be gone. You know, it'll be back yeah. next winter. And, and I think that's a really really good point. Is that at the end of the day, we're advocating for what's best for our community. Yeah. You know, certainly, you know, if if they do an interchange at State Road Nine, we will absolutely be advocating for sidewalks or some kind of a passageway sure. for bikes and and rollerbladers and others to go across there. Uh, the other thing I should mention, just as as we kind of tie a, tie a bow on this US thirty conversation, is that this year, in fact, they're already in Warsaw doing this, is that you will see US 30 being repaved yeah. through State Road 9. So the whole west side, oh, okay. all the way up to State Road 9 of US 30, will be repaved this year by NDOT. Okay. So be prepared for some slowdowns and stuff, but it should happen mostly at night. So we should be in good shape. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, with talking about uh, alongside the road, uh, I have noticed some changes alongside the road. There are flags being put in my front driveway, <laughs> sure. down my street, and there is digging in my neighbor's yard. What the heck is going on? Yes. So as we've talked about for many times now, that is the fiber optic project with Surf Broadband. My uh, favorite topic. Yes. Your fa yes. Uh, so yes. Yeah, so, so fiber is being installed in that portion of our community, which is really kind of the northwest side of the city. Uh, I, one thing I think I want residents to take away from that, from what I'm about to say here, this, this is, this is the important part is that the fiber company is going to make sure that they make things right. So if they go and dig in the front yard, which by the way, it's the city's right of way. So they have the ability to do that just like their sewer and water and gas and CenturyLink or Lumen now or Mediacom in those areas, you know, surf has that same ability to go in that, in that right of way. Yeah. So I say that to say, if you have a pile of dirt, if you have, you know, uh, some sod that's messed up, if you have something that, you know, if something gets hit, uh, whether it's a, a you know, private, uh, I don't know, a sprinkler or a, uh, uh, I guess, a watering system for your yard or if there's a, you know, a sewer tap or something that's hit or something like that, please, as soon as you know, contact SURF directly at construction.surfbroadband.com. You can also contact my office at Columbia City, uh, at, at, in, in the city of Hall, City Hall of Columbia City at 260-248-5111, and we can help you out. All righty. Um, so for people who don't have holes in their front yard, um, and not to say that's a big problem, I love it by the fact, <laughs> um, 
where can people look to see what the status is and where where can they expect um, the fiber plan to be? Yep. So uh, uh, so that that construction.surfbroadband.com website is a, is a good place to kind of see what the plan is. I will say that it is, uh, as I kind of mentioned in my State of the City address, it is a little bit delayed from what they originally thought. And the, the reason for that is because they had real issues with other companies locating their uh, their lines in the ground that really kind of held them back. Uh, but now, as you as you mentioned earlier, they are going full bore. Excuse the pun, man. It's pun. It's a it's, it's a punny it's a day. Pun day. You, you get one more, <laughs> one more. So so they so they are going. Uh, we'll say full tilt. How about that okay. around the city right now? And they are they are moving. They are getting some real good progress going on. In fact, today I went to my mailbox and I had a card. From Surf asking about uh, whether or not as the does, does the current resident want to uh, join Surf Broadband as their fiber provider. Yeah. So so you so it, those areas that have already been dug or are being dug in right now, you probably will be receiving a card of some sort from them. Uh, again, I'm not endorsing them. I don't endorse those private companies, but I will say it is nice that a company is investing in fiber optic technology in the city of Columbia City. So oh, it, okay. so it might be inconvenient, but long haul, the, yes. the dirt will fill back in. Yes. <laughs> the the internet will continue to get faster, and I like the idea that if I get a hole dug in my yard, odds are that means I'm close enough that it's <laughs> basically fiber. like a guarantee. It's going to be somewhere nearby where I can enjoy the speeds that bring me into the modern day and age. I, I don't know about you, but just ever since we've started talking about faster internet in and around Columbia city, it seems like I've been just having days where the, the internet currently at my house just does not, it doesn't get out of bed in the morning yes. if to put it that way. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, Oh my gosh, I just want to send an email <laughs> and, and it's, it's kicking back. It's doing yeah. this. I just want to log on and check yeah. my bank account and do, you know, you know, things that are, uh, you know, adulting yes. and uh, the modern day and age. And uh, I, I, I don't know, I've, I've been looking for this day and, and a small inconvenience for the long-term convenience of uh, what's happening. I, I, I frankly am happy to hear it. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I, I use a lot of internet. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, one last, uh, I guess one one other topic when we talk about current stuff uh, is is obviously Westgate. We've been talking about that for a while mm -hmm. now. Uh, Westgate is is supposed to be breaking ground here toward the end of this month. Very cool. So residents of Westgate, be prepared. Um, actually, I believe tonight. I think it's tonight. Uh, there will be a uh, a meeting for the Westgate residents. Uh, at I think it's seven o'clock tonight. At, Very cool. Um, yes, for for kind of construction. Very prep, cool, if you will. So yeah, good stuff happening. Do you want to do you want to talk about arts, arts commission? I would love to talk about the arts commission. Okay, plenty on the horizon. You yes. said for the first time there's a Columbia City Arts Commission. Yes. In the near future, what do we expect that to look like? Advocates for arts. You had mentioned not just murals on the side of building, which yeah. I love and I think yeah. makes really iconic not only photographs, Absolutely. but just going in and around Columbia City beautification yeah. makes me feel like somebody cares enough about the community right. that we're going to take care of it and not just take care of it and mow the yard, but also intentionally put some paint on the side of the barn, to put yeah. it that way. What, I didn't realize that there wasn't one. What what is What is on the horizon? Why is this occurring? And what is some of the major things that you expect them to be tackling? Not that you're you're on the board yeah. Uh, in making all of the decisions <laughs> for them, but sure. but what's what's the reasoning behind the CCAC? Yes, thank you. Great, great acronym there. So or whatever that is, the CAC, the 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 CAC. -CAC. Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> for the Arts Commission, uh, we're yeah, we're ex really excited about it. it. The the goal obviously is to is to expand the amount of public art in obviously our community. And, and that can be done in lots of different ways. So effectively the process is going to be that we will, um, that the city council will draft up effectively an ordinance that creates this commission. There will be appointments made. Um, and, and, you know, obviously for individuals who are not only interested, but, but yeah. have involvement in the arts. And, and then from there, the goal obviously is to, find resources to continue to bolster the arts in our community. So in, in 
kind of coming up with this idea, if you will, I did reach out to the Indiana Arts Commission, and they've given me a lot of guidance on kind of where to go with that. They have multiple grant-type programs to, to help out with some of those things. You know, certainly I could see it being a point in which we start as the city to, to budget some dollars toward what the Arts Commission could do in our community, things to that effect. But really it's a way to bring individuals together to expand that presence. So when we talk about the murals, for instance, obviously individuals latch on to certain things, right? And it all comes down to what your passion is. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's, you know, playing ball at Morsha's Park. Sometimes that's walking the trails or rollerblading the trails. Sometimes, though, <laughs> it's posing in front of murals and getting senior photos done and things like that. So that's one way in which we can uh, really attach people to our community. I think that's wonderful. How soon do we expect that organization coming together? And then if you had to guess, uh, I imagine all groups work a little bit differently until we feel the effects of their work. Would sure. you say? Sure. I would, yeah, I would say the Arts Commission, my, my goal is to have the Arts Commission at least formed and, uh, and obviously up and running by, I'd say, late fall, early winter. Um, and then from, a, from an effect standpoint, obviously you're going to have time for organization and try to figure out kind of what that mission is, if you will. But at the end of the day, I, I really believe that you're going to start seeing their effects probably by summer of next year. And, 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 and it, there's a lot of, it depends on what could be. There's demand for what but, they do. But there clearly is. There's clearly a revitalization of the arts in, in Columbia City and, and in Whitley County and and, and we want to be on the forefront of that to be a partner with those organizations. Let's get a little bit more granular. Do you have a specific item that you wish to address in that group? Is sure. there is there something? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, there's multiple. Obviously, as a former show choir kid myself, I'd love right. to see more performing arts happening in Whitley County. Okay. And certainly Columbia City. But I do see the murals as really a good starting spot. Sure. Murals are not super expensive. You just have to have a willing business owner and an artist that can do that work. So I could see it being a scenario where you really start to see murals starting to blast off around the city. Okay. Um, you've seen some of that take place in Cherubusco, for instance. You've seen lots of murals really start to take place there. Obviously, there's a couple here in Columbia City that have, that have really grown from there. And we have some great artists that are here. It's just capitalizing on that opportunity. Okay. So we'll be kind of on the lookout for that. Yes. Yes, Absolutely. All right, well, that kind of wraps up Mondays with some hair. Um, if you didn't hear and if you're just tuning in, you kind of missed everything. But <laughs> I will I will cap over everything that we just talked about. Um, the uh, Columbia City just got a DNR expansive trail grant uh, for $1.8 million. Um, that will cover Line Street, Radio Road, um, Line Street. I think I already said Line Street. Uh, it'll come up over the two rivers and connect everything up. Um, uh, the Columbia City Arts Commission, uh, not just being a dream anymore, but actually coming to blueprints, uh, not just mur murals on the side of buildings, but finding resources to bolder, bolster in art, uh, in Columbia City, hoping to bring individual individuals together, um, through performing arts, but also everyday works of art. Um, Route 30, uh, being possibly turned into a freeway for safety and logistics of the township <laughs> of Columbia City. Um, and my favorite topic, uh, surf broadband digging in new locations around the town, um, Look for cards in your mailbox to see if you can, uh, or if you okay. will, uh, join up with Surf Broadband. Um, or if you have any trouble with anything, that's damage right. yes. or whatnot, reach out uh, uh, Mr. to the Mayor, appropriate authorities. Uh, really quick, what was the phone number they can call if that does happen? They can just go ahead and call my office at City Hall, 260-248-5111. Well, with that phone number being said, Mr. Daniel, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. In the studio today, we have Jonathan Peters, myself. Mr. Jordan Gloss of the Radio and Television Studios teacher, and of course, the reason why you're here, Mr. <laughs> Mayor Daniel. Thank you again for the opportunity. And of course, goodbye. Join us next time, Mondays with the Mayor, here on WJHS 91.5, The Eagle, broadcasting from Columbia City High School. Views and opinions expressed here do not represent WCCS. Search for WJHS on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and more. Write to us your comments and questions to be voiced on the air. WJHS is 91.5 The Eagle.